I want to talk about Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's strategy and the negative effects that it has had on our society and why this strategy will tear our country apart if he keeps going in this direction. I'm not going to talk specifically about the strategy that Prime Minister Trudeau has been using for the pandemic, uh, and I won't be commenting or judging on the, the pandemic itself or the convoy. So this is uh, more of a bird's eye view. I want to talk about Prime Minister Trudeau's strategy in a way that explains his behavior and the effects that it has on our society from my area of expertise, which is communications. And that includes uh, hypnosis, neuro-linguistic programming, and the art of influence. I grew up in the world of marketing and advertising. And I grew up in an environment where these strategies were used, and so I learned them myself. To be honest, I didn't really want to do this video because I know a lot of people will react to this in a negative way. But I also know there's a lot of people that will greatly benefit from what I'm about to share and it will help them understand not only what's going on from a leadership perspective and it will also help explain what some people are going through in their personal lives because of it. I share information or knowledge that empowers people and I think that this will empower a lot of people. And I have to say that I'm okay with you having a different perspective. And it's okay to disagree with me. And you're welcome to explain his strategy in the way that you see it. I'm not suggesting my views are the right views or should be the only view. It's just what I see. So with that said, NLP is a modeling of success. And you really learn to break down successful strategies so they can be duplicated. For Prime Minister Trudeau, his strategy has seen success... But there has been a tremendous cost for that success. And one of those costs is the Freedom Convoy and the movement it created. It's a predictable outcome for the strategy that Trudeau is using. And I'm going to call it out for what it is. It's your typical, average, narcissistic strategy. And there's a wealth of information about narcissism and the strategies narcissists use. So everything that I say here can be confirmed. Psychology tells us that we tend to elect narcissistic, sociopathic, psychopaths into positions of power. That's what it takes to succeed in politics. And they say the same is true for CEOs of corporations. And that's according to Harvard Business School. Now, I'm not saying that all CEOs and politicians are narcs. I'm just saying the majority are. I'm not taking a paintbrush and painting everybody the same the way, you know, Politicians tend to do that. And what's going on here also happens in many families and many businesses. It happened in my family. And so I researched narcissism and, I, and family systems so that I could understand my situation. The narcissist believes that they are right and anyone who disagrees with them is the enemy. They are very black and white. They're inflexible and incapable of seeing things from another's perspective because they feel godlike and they put themselves above everyone else. You are insignificant to them. Their way is the only way. Your opinion is worthless and doesn't deserve consideration because they are all knowing. They never admit they are wrong and they twist reality so that they are always right. They lack empathy, sympathy, guilt, remorse, love, compassion, accountability, or any emotion that would have them care about other human beings. Although the grand narcissist has charisma or charm that gets them quickly into rapport with others and gets them to trust them, and they are great at pretending to be an empath who cares about you and gaining your trust so that they can influence and manipulate you. You'll quite often find them in positions of power. <laughs> Now, I'm always advancing my knowledge and skills, and I'm currently taking a course on hypno hypnotic influence. And one of the marketing strategies I use is called false exclusion. And this is where you create two groups of people. There's uh, one group of people who keeps their minds open to learning new things, and these are the most intelligent people in the world. And then there's this other group of people who are bad people. And so we demonize this other group who disagrees with us and the group that agrees with us, they're all heroes who are saving the world. The bad group becomes the scapegoat, the scapegoat because they are responsible for everything bad. And so you lump all your enemies into this group with them. The good group gets all the praise that you can lump on them. 
And most people just want some validation in their life. So most people will want to fit into this group. It's called bandwagoning. Prime Minister uh, Trudeau's main strategy for this pandemic has been what they call the carrot or the stick approach. The narcissist's favorite tool. So he created two groups of people. And the first is the bandwagon, where they apply peer pressure to get you to do something because everyone else is doing it. Everyone who conforms gets to be part of a team of heroes because getting it protects everyone around you. And so you're saving lives and you're saving and protecting lives and you trust science and you trust the experts. And the experts and scientists tell us that he's right and 100% of the experts agree. You're on the right side. You're doing the right thing. And so he uses a lot of slogans to get people on his side. He plays on people's emotions rather than using logic and uses guilt and shame to control them. There was an oil rig that caught on fire and people were faced with a choice. They could stay on the burning platform and be burned alive or they could jump into the flaming waters 150 feet below them. The thought of being burned alive was enough to motivate many people to jump And they never would have done this in any other circumstance. So this strategy became known as the burning platform, which is something that can motivate people to change. The virus makes an extremely effective burning platform, as we have seen, and has motivated many people to jump onto the bandwagon. This strategy also requires that you make promises to everyone in order to get them on side. You know, get it, and you can visit your loved ones in the hospital or care homes. Get it, and everything will return to normal. Some people get money. Some people get a sucker. Now, this strategy won't work without the other side, the scapegoat. Your choices have to be limited down to two. It's called a double bind. You're either in this group here, or you're in that group here. In a world of infinite possibility, you're forced to choose between two groups. Are you a hero, or are you a terrorist? So your second option is to be viewed by everyone in the hero group as a terrorist. And here's the specific labels he has given to anyone who opposes his mandates. And I wrote these down when he talked about the truckers. A reporter said the truckers question the safety. And so he called anyone who questions safety a conspiracy theorist and says that they wear tinfoil hats. He says they reject the science and are peddling disinformation. They don't respect science or evidence. He says they spew hatred and incite violence. They perform acts of violence. They are racist, anti-vaxxers, white supremacists, Nazis, homophobic, transphobic, intolerant. And he calls them terrorists. They call the strategy labeling or name calling. And it's one of the most popular amongst bullies. So he makes them out to be as bad as possible and installs anchors so his followers associate non-conformance to all the things that long list of labels means. Disinformation, for example, is a label that automatically invalidates an argument. Heretic was used in the past in the same way. Any scientist or doctor that has an opinion or question outside of the approved narrative is labeled as disinformation and their career is destroyed and they are stripped of their license. Doctors and nurses who didn't get the jab have been fired for that reason alone. I guess getting fired like that isn't as bad as when they would have been labeled as witches when getting fired was done by flame. From a bird's eye view, the mindset behind people supporting the burning of witches is the same. A chiropractor will lose their license when they are caught talking about the virus and suggest anything outside of the approved narrative. He also punishes and threatens anyone who doesn't comply. If you don't get the jab, you lose your job. You can't eat in a restaurant, you can't go to a shore or at a tournament. You can't travel. They make the non-compliance group as bad as they can and punish non-compliance. They demonize uh, non-conformance and question authority. And then they get the hero team to enforce all the rules and shame others into compliance. Prime Minister Trudeau actively suggests to his followers to ignore friends and family who don't comply. Don't answer the phone. Don't return texts. Don't invite them over. Cut them out of your life. Shame them make them suffer until they comply. If this was in a family, then the second group would be the scapegoat, the family scapegoat. I prefer to use goats over sheep. The outcast. 
this group of people become the scapegoats. So everything bad that happens, it's their fault. When the government breaks a promise, then they just blame the scapegoat. When things don't work as planned, it's the fault of the scapegoat. One of the key strategies or skills of the narcissist is to make promises with no intention of keeping them. And instead, to use the carrot on a stick method so they can constantly change the goalposts and keep the team members constantly trying to comply so they can eventually get the carrot without them ever actually reaching the end goal, which of course in this case is freedom. It's the scapegoat's fault that they can't get freedom because the scapegoats are not on the team. And so the supporters, or what they call flying monkeys, need to force the non-conformers into compliance so they can get back to the things that they love. In psychology, they call these people flying monkeys. And it's their job to justify and normalize the narcissist's behavior while pushing their agenda. They push the narcissist's agenda to gain favor and hopefully win that promised prize. The bandwagon people are lured with promises and fancy slogans by working together. We are saving lives. We stand together. We got your back. These are all smart people who trust science and they trust the facts. And they are the vast majority at 90%. These are the people who are here for each other and sacrificed for each other. And they all know that the only way out of this is my way. <laughs> Pump them up and make them feel good about themselves. And he positions himself as the only one that can save them. And that's how fire starters work. They let the flames grow, and then they swoop in to save everyone. The straw man strategy. It's important for him not to give the scapegoat any credibility at all. You have to dehumanize them, and anything they say is not worth hearing, not worth considering, not worth discussing. There's no need for talks because the narcissist has already decided what's right, and the only question is conformance. And so there's no diplomacy. For the straw man strategy, you deliberately misrepresent the concerns of the scapegoat to the point of absurdity. Diminish, devalue, dismiss, dehumanize, minimize, and invalidate. The weaker and more idiotic you can make their arguments look, the easier it is to prove them wrong. And that has been his strategy with anyone who disagrees with him. Disagree with Trudeau and you're labeled as a terrorist. And what happens with most terrorists? Well, we watched the U.S. hunt down terrorists after 9-11. And so he anchored the Freedom Convoy protesters to the terrorist label. And so the hate that everyone had for bin Laden has been transferred to the truckers and their supporters now. The, the protesters and their supporters are now considered as terrorists. And people are calling for payback with the same passion that we had after 9-11. Now let's talk about commands. And embedded commands. In NLP, we find the strategies that work and we copy them. Embedded commands are short commands that are inserted into regular sentences. A direct command could be, shut the door. And if the person recognizes your authority, then they'll follow the command. The buy now button is a command. Get started now is a command. An embedded command is hidden in a sentence so that it bypasses the critical mind, but the unconscious mind hears it and follows the command outside of your awareness. Using the command, shut the door, in a sentence like, I don't know if you want to shut the door or not. Trust the science is a command that's used both directly and embedded. Prime Minister Trudeau uses a lot of embedded commands while he speaks. As the Prime Minister, he has authority, so many people will accept his direct commands too. So what happens when a narcissist separates in a relationship? The go-to strategy is name-calling and smear campaign. They start spreading rumors and get everyone to hate their ex. Every time Trudeau talks about the truckers, he calls them names and he frames them in a bad light. He's definitely doing a smear campaign against them. Canada has always been the leader in peace and diplomacy. If this was happening in other countries, it would have been Canada pushing for leaders to meet with the people and negotiate a diplomatic end. But that's not happening here. There has been no negotiation, no diplomacy, no talks, only force. And that's not how a democracy works. Ruling by force is not democratic. It's the opposite. How can emergency powers be invoked in Canada without first trying diplomacy? Or consulting with other parties in a minority government? 
or even your own cabinet, only if it's no longer a democracy. A narcissist could never admit that they are wrong. They can't change direction because they have warped reality to the point where they believe that they are still on the best path. And it could very well be that everything that's happening now is part of what he had planned. Maybe his goal was to get emergency powers. I don't know his actual intention because a narcissist always has a hidden agenda. But I can tell you that someone who's smart enough to get elected is smart enough to push things in a direction so they can get the result that they want. The strategy is doomed to explode because the use of force always creates resistance. The resistance is in direct proportion to the amount of force that's being applied. More force will create more resistance. This is typical in narcissistic strategy. In business, it's known that the narcissist is the dynamite that gets things off the ground, and so narcissism makes for a great startup entrepreneur. But then at some point, a company needs to become more diplomatic if it wants to survive long term. Ruling with narcissism only gets you so far, and then, if the strategy doesn't strain, if the strategy doesn't change, it leads to self-destruction. Trudeau needs to switch his strategy. The force strategy requires extreme or even lethal force if he continues down this path any further. The people who have not conformed already won't be insulted, tricked, bribed, or threatened into conformance, and so a strategy needs to change. And the goal. A true leader accepts responsibility for their outcomes, and then they change their strategy to increase their effectiveness. They use diplomacy and look to create a win-win resolution to the problem. The effects of using the narcissistic strategy by, uh, of conquer and divide are many. By driving a wedge between two sides, there has been a drastic increase in intolerance, anger, and rage. People have been isolated and shut off from society, from their families. It leads to stress, anxiety, drinking, drug use, addiction, abuse, suicide. The number of people who wish that they were not living in this world has drastically increased, along with the number of people successfully committing suicide. And the biggest increase are youth suicides. It also leads to violent confrontation. It leads to resistance. We can see the results that we are getting into society. Crime is up, suicide is up, abuse is up, protesting is up, stress is up. Arguing on social media is out of control. People are hating each other and lifetime friendships are ending. The stress that narcissism creates takes a deadly toll on people's health as the stress magnifies and accelerates any disease or health issues that you have. This is all the result of Trudeau's leadership. This is the result of the toxic divide-and-conquer strategy. It causes more people to learn this toxic strategy and utilize it in their own relationships. And they say in psychology that all the people that come for therapy have been subjected to narcissistic abuse. All the problems that we have in our world is the direct result of toxic, narcissistic, abusive uh, behavior. The same strategy that the Prime Minister is using. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau takes gaslighting to a whole new level. The mental health issues that his strategy is costing now and into the future is staggering. People are afraid to speak out and have a discussion because things are so hostile, no matter what side of an issue you're on. And Trudeau is deleting any voice other than his own. So there's no free speech. We no longer live in a democracy. If you can't speak freely without censorship, then free speech is gone. Censorship and free speech cannot coexist. Instead, we live in a society of oppression, where one idea or way of thinking is considered the only way, the right way, and everyone else is wrong. There is no room for discussion, and name-calling, shame, guilt, and insults are the most common strategy used, by a lot of people really, and that's because they model the behavior of our leaders, who are using strategies that work for them. Bullying, threats, insults. They were bullied into it, and they think that the same strategy will work for them. But it won't. This is clearly narcissistic behavior. An empath would have a discussion and try to see it from the other side's point of view. When you look at it from another person's perspective, and then another person's perspective, then you learn that there are way more than two sides. And if you hear enough voices, you'll get an entirely different perspective on things, and you might even find that everyone 
really wants the same things at a higher perspective, and they only differ on how to get there. I could go on in depth, so I'm just going to leave it there. Canada's Prime Minister is a narcissist using toxic strategies that have divided our society and caused a lot of mental distress for everyone. I hope that understanding this helps to empower you. The division is so deep that we won't be able to swing others to our side, so we cause more divide when we try. Force creates resistance, and that's a law of physics. Let me know how you see his strategy and put it down in the comments, and feel free to share regardless of whether you agree or disagree. I believe that narcissism is the problem in this world, and finding peace is the solution. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Jeff Broomfield. Have a good one.